So I'd like to introduce my colleagues. Uh, we have here with me today, Oriel Eckhart. He's the technical director at TVU Networks. And I also have here Yoni Teyar, the marketing director at TVU Networks. So I'll hand it over to them now to get started. And thank you once again, everybody for joining. Any questions, just ask them in the Q&A button and looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doris. Uh, so again, hello everyone and welcome. Uh, today, uh, I hope, I mean, you're all doing okay. We, I know that in many European countries, uh, I mean, the lockdown is starting to be a bit more relaxed and people are starting to restart their working life. And in some other countries, I mean, it's still a bit delayed, but I hope that all of you are safe and good. Uh, today we're going to focus on all the different alternative uh, TV networks offer in terms of remote production as well as like customer use cases. Uh, the reason why we think it's important for you is that even though uh, the quarantine is over in many countries, like there are still many rules around social distancing and traveling that will keep on going for many months to come. And these solutions are a very good way uh, to keep your uh, production going and your live events going. Uh, first of all, at a way more interesting budget, production budget than you used to have with satellite or obi truck. But also it will allow you to respect like social distancing and all these other criteria that we have to face today. So let's start uh, right now, okay? Uh, first of all, a very quick reminder uh, for those who have joined like our previous webinars on uh, cloud production and um, news anchoring from home, we presented that diagram. But it's just to say that uh, TVU is offering a solution that cover the whole media supply chain. Okay, from acquisition of live video to automated indexing and metadata, several remote production solution, distribution over IP and live streaming, and as well as a system to manage, control, and also get analytics from all, all this media supply chain. Okay. As explained today, we will mainly focus on uh, the remote at home production. And also we will present at the end of the session, uh, the new features that we have released on cloud production. Okay. We're not going to do a full presentation on cloud production. We already did it in the past for those who are interested in doing it again just contact us and we can organize a new session. So let's go into the topic. Today we have three remote production alternatives that will be really helpful during social distancing. The first one is TV or RPS for at home Remy production. Oriol, our technical director, will go into further detail, but it basically allows you to have a single device at a venue, for example, a stadium for like the games that are going to be played under lockdown in Germany or other countries, and to connect up to six camera, SDI camera, professional camera, and receive the signal at a remote studio location. All this using the public internet. Uh, it's a solution that is uh, very reliable, that has been used already for many years. And I would say now, uh, since the market has been moving to the situation where we are today, it's ideal to cover a lot more events as well, a, lot, a wider range of events. I'll go more in detail. The second solution that we want to present is a wireless remote production using our TV1 transmitters connected to professional camera. It doesn't have to be uh, like the shoulder ENG camera. It can also be like professional sport camera. Our solution also include like the capacity to do remote control, like remote camera controls, uh, intercom, etc. I mean, video return, Oriol will present all the detail and do a live demo. But this is also a very interesting solution when you want to have more flexibility to be more mobile and to again produce everything from a remote studio location. And the third alternative is entirely cloud based. Uh, we have like a lot of people that are using it either with professional camera or with smartphones where you can get up to four live feeds, or again, perfectly synchronized, and all uh, into a cloud producer. So we've presented this in the past, and we will come back to it at the end, again, for a live demo. Also, what I wanted to show is that we have hundreds of customer stories around remote production. I think it's interesting for you, because like, you can always like, learn from the other and learn how they've used it, their workflow, like 
what was their challenges and how they were able to answer it. We have like a remote production of like triathlon from like Hawaii to Paris. We had like world roller games that were produced across 11 venues uh, or like very standard event, like the CrossFit games, like with Reebok that are like done every year where it's in a single venue, but they have like multi-camera and synchronized also like for like some football game. But we also had like more, uh, like I would say variation in terms of remote production. For example, people using a remote production solution like RPS to do remote graphic production. Like for example, for rallies here at put Alcamel, but also like the International Motorsports Federation in the US is using this. That's the kind of solution. We also have like cloud production. I'm not going to go too much into detail. We talked a lot about it in the past, but it's been used for news, for radio, for concerts, for lots of different events as well. And also remote fan participation, which is a kind of uh, other way of doing remote production where you can also engage the fan from home, okay? All these stories are available on our website. Here is, I'm showing you a view on our website, but you can easily choose the technology that you're interested in on our website and view the stories uh, and get into more detail for the stories. And as I said, within a story, you will have a lot more detail and workflow and diagram challenges. So it can help you to duplicate uh, this kind of application to your environment. Okay. So all these solutions that I presented have four common points, like I said. One is that it will be working perfectly during this social distancing period. It doesn't require an OB truck, where OB trucks are pretty hard to use uh, these days because it's a very confined space. So it's hard to maintain like the regulation imposed by the government. Also, all of these solutions, whether it's producer in the cloud or the wireless camera or like the cable camera with RPS, they are all frame accurate, which is important. All of them offer like broadcast quality video that can go up to full HD or even like 4K and also can like be perfectly uh, with a SDI signal or for digital. So I mean, it covers the whole range of like broadcast video format that you need. And finally, all of them are using the public internet, okay, which uh, Ethernet, Wi-Fi or cellular, 4G, 5G. So all of this is very useful uh, to reduce also your production budget while maintaining very good reliability to produce your live event. So without going any further, I'm going to let Oriol present you the first solution, which is TVRPS. Uh, here you have a bunch of interesting features about the product, but Oriol will explain all of them during a live demo. Oriol, I leave it to you. Thank you, Yoni. Thank you, Doris. Hello to all the people. There is a, a lot of audience coming, so thank you for uh, spending time with us. Uh, let me share my screen and you will see here what is RPS. RPS, as you said, is a multi-channel transmitter that can go, it has six inputs and uh, in one side and two outputs on the encoder side and in the other side, of course, six outputs and two inputs. That permits to transmit six high quality videos in, in, in broadcast quality from the venue to home and then two return videos also in high quality for the return. Most important things, the latency, we can go down to 0 0.8 seconds of latency, 800 milliseconds of latency uh, using public internet uh, and up to 150,000 kilobits, 50 megabits per second of bit rate. About bit rate. Uh, you can apply a global read rate for all the inputs, or you can choose for every of the channels a different bit rate. Here you can see that is the histogram of the bit rate. If I decide that channel two, I don't want to have so big bit rate, I can reduce to five uh, max. You will see that the, <clears throat> the, the, the value is going to reduce. You can do it that in life without cutting the video transmission. So now you have your, your reduction on the bit rate and the signal continues to, to work. Also, you can, you can have a preview. This is a low quality preview, just to check that the signal that is entering on any of the input is the signal that you expect 
to receive there. Okay, it, it's, it's, it takes a while. And you would have here the preview of the signal. Just to see that, yes, this is the camera that I want to put on camera number one. Um, other important things is about the audio. You can transmit two channels of audio or 16 channels of audio per video channel. In total, with the six channels, you can transmit up to 96. Uh, all this audio is transmitted embedded. Okay, to maintain the synchronicity, the uh, lip sync synchronization of video and audio. Uh, other important things is the video return. Here on the back, you can choose the video return to be sent it back from one to the other. Uh, <clears throat> also in high quality, and you can choose the bit rate for this video return. The delay of the video return will be the same delay of the video transmission. Okay. Also here in this left side, you can see an histogram of the actual bit rate consumption of all the system. Okay. That includes video, audio, and all the fake bit rate. Okay. So here you can see in all the time how this is going. Uh, as you can see, all this control, now I'm controlling from home one equipment that I have in the office. So the control is done via public internet. So you don't need to be installed on the place. So it, it permits you to set up the equipment that you want to control on the field and remotely from home, you can control this equipment. Another important thing that I will explain is that from one encoder, you can send to two decoders at the same time. In cases of redundancy, so you can send to two different receivers or in multiplays uh, production. Like in football, you can send the main feed to the studios and the secondary feed to the uh, refresh uh, studio for the bar. So with one encoder, you can send two streams. Okay, we'll show you all the different uh, solutions that there are for the for the setup of the of RPS. Okay, other things you can save all these settings. So every time that you go to the same place, you can recall to make it easy to produce all of them. Another important thing: you can start and stop signals individually. So now I have stopped at number five. And one, two, three, and four continue to transmit. The bit rate will be reduced. So if there is a problem, I can stop the signal and I can ensure that the rest of the production is working. Uh, important things, you can transmit in H.264 on HABC. Okay. And the other thing is that you can, this can be in constant bit rate. That is, we recommend that for a very good quality uh, internet connections or local networks. And there are also two, two other things that is variable bit rate in the average priority. That means that if there is a problem on the network and the bandwidth is reduced, it will affect all the channels by the same. Or the second one is channel priority. On channel priority, we assign to channel one the maximum priority and to channel six the less. So if there is a problem, it will affect first channel six, and it will never affect channel one, okay? That, so these two scenarios, why we do? Uh, the average is good for productions like uh, uh, programs that you need all the cameras at the same time. And the channel priority is very good for sport. So camera one, that is the main shot, it will have the maximum priority. And for example, in camera six, you could install a beauty shot. If you lose it, it's a, because of problems on the network, well, it's not a drama. You only lose a, a, a beauty shot. So this is more or less what you can do. Also, you have here the status of the of all the decoders and all of that. So you know, I pass you. Thank you, Oriol. So I'm going to reshare my presentation. So like Oriol was saying, uh, first of all, as a reminder, if you have any question, just ask them on the Q&A uh, part of your Zoom and we will answer all of the question at the end of the webinar. So anything, just type it in the Q&A part of the Zoom webinar. 
Oriol was mentioning like the different kind of setup for RPS. So here are some technical diagrams that Oriol can explain quickly. These are the, the different solutions that we can offer. Uh, as I can say, as I said before, RPS has six inputs and two outputs and the IP tunneling. What is the IP tunneling? It, it, it installs a tunnel between encoder and decoder so you can manage almost any IP connections like camera control, tallies, uh, IP intercoms, PTZ cameras, almost anything. Uh, that permits you to have control of the equipment on the field. Also, the RPS encoder has two Ethernet connections, so you can do bonding on the transmission. In that case, it could be uh, one, you can use two internet providers to go to the public internet, and in the decoder, just one internet, uh, one receiver. So that permits you to have redundancy on the transmission. So if we go to the next slide, the next. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it just like. <laughs> Don't worry. For some reason, sorry. For some reason, it's it just froze. It here. Okay, I'm resharing. No worries. Okay, don't worry. Another thing that you can do, as I explained, you can transmit from one encoder to do to two decoders. On this case, you could have redundancy on the internet connection on the transmitter, and also you could have redundancy on the internet connection of the receiver and also on the equipment. Or you can send from one encoder to do different places. That's another solution that we can offer. The third solution, it could be to send from two encoders to two decoders. That could be done as a total backup as we put here, or we can sync all the transmitters and you can do a daisy chain. In that case, you will transmit 12 signals and receive four. You can add as many transmitters as you want to be to do a bigger uh, uh, system. Okay, six, 12, 18, and more of that. Okay. Thank you, Oriol. So that's all about RPS. Again, if you have questions or need a live demo, like more detail, we can, I mean, question we can answer at the end and live demo after we can do one-on-one -on -one, uh, in-depth like presentation, talk about your project in uh, specifically. Now we're going to go to our wireless remote production, okay? First of all, before um, Oriol present you uh, the solution and the setup, I'm just going to show you a little video that gives you an idea of the concept. Uh, it's going to be a bit slow on your screen due to the internet, but we will post also this video on YouTube after the webinar. Okay, so I leave it back to Oriol to present the solution and explain in further detail. Uh, thank you, Yoni. Well, this is the TV one as more, a lot of you know it. Uh, this is our portable transmitter. And if, as you can see in the video, the first interesting thing, you can send video, you can have the video backup here, the video fallback here on the HDMI output, and there is an Ethernet connection to do the IP tunneling. The same IP tunneling that I explained you that we have implemented for RPS to control equipment, we can implement that in the TV1. So from the receiver, you can control equipment that is in the field. This equipment can be, on the same time, the, R the RCP of the camera, it can be a PTZ camera, you can send intercoms, you can send almost everything that you would need. Here there is the, the diagram, you can use the, the as you can see here, you, there is the IP tunnel and all of that. That is, the, that is a very good. On that, on top of that, you can add the second thing that I will show you now, that is time lock. Time lock is 
the synchronization of transmitters and receivers. That gives you the opportunity to have all the packs on the field, transmitting each pack to one receiver and get all these packs synchronized on the output of the receivers. We do that using uh, NTP time sources that makes the synchronization of all the packs. We, with that situation, you can do an easy uh, <clears throat> setup on the field with up to six cameras, all the cameras with his pack under him, so there it will be the social distancing that Johnny has told before, and sending all of these to your uh, home. In your home, you will produce a very similar if you were producing locally. Uh, the, the total delay of the transmission could be as low as half a second. So it will be very easy. Okay. I let you share your screen uh, if you want yeah, to. Yeah, let me share my screen. Now I will show you uh, how we do the desynchronization. This is Command Center. Command Center is our uh, cloud control system. In that case, I installed in the office to receiver that is uh, Lab Linux and Lab Linux R2. On each of that, I have uh, Make Life one pack with the same signal coming from the same video player. In one, I've put it one second delay, and in the other, I've put it three seconds delay. It will come in a, in a while. Okay, so to make it you clear that both packs are not synchronized. Okay, if I go to multi control, that is the key point. Here I can put up to six receivers. I can select more receivers, okay, and put it. We'll do the demo with two. So here I have my two receivers. As you can see, both signals are not synchronized. To make it synchron with the frame with a delay between them of one frame only, it would be zero frames if you synchronize if you gen log cameras in origin. It's as easy as select time lock, adjust the bit rate that you want to work, adjust the delay that you want to, to select. We can go down to 0 0.5 seconds. And both signals will start to synchronize. As you can see, it takes a while because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a time synchronization, but you will have both synchronized. If you go to the different uh, one, you would see that both are synchronized, okay? If you return to the, okay? That it makes very easy to synchronize feeds uh, <clears throat> for you. And it will make that it will be very easy to use the packs that you are using for news, also for sports. You're muted, Johnny. Perfect. Thank you, Oriol. Let me share my screen. Yeah. Okay, so I remind everybody that if you have questions, please, uh, ask them on the Q&A session and also we will be recording that webinar. So don't worry. I mean, you can also rewatch it and we can do one-on-one -on -one demo. So going on, like Oriol just presented you uh, the wireless remote production. This is a more complete workflow where you present you if you had like multiple camera connected with intercom, with the receiver at the remote production side and also the capacity to remotely control the camera uh, and use like the IP tunnel to do more things or if you want to comment on that diagram or if you want me to pass. yeah that, that diagram is the is the global explanation of what that said you would have up to six cameras on the field each camera has his sdi output to the transmitter it has the return video to one monitor it, it would have the bidirectional intercom and the ip tunnel uh, the hdmi sdi and the intercom it goes directly from one transmitter to one receiver so you would have the intercom and all of this, and the IP tunnel, it will go to the camera control. This is a typical setup to change the, the typical triax uh, workflow that you have in the Obi-Ban to simulate that over public internet. So from home, you would have the same or almost the same control that you have with the triax camera. That in the demo that we do, we use it Panasonic cameras and we work it very well. We know that with Sony cameras, it also works. And, and other brands. Thank you. 
Okay, so that was about the first two uh, production, RPS and time lock for wireless production. And now we're going to present you TVU producer. So again, we're not going to do a full demo of producer. It's a cloud-based live video production. But since we've already done many webinars uh, on that solution before, I just want to remind that the materials are available online and also that producer is still free to use until May 31st as we've been providing this service for free since beginning of March uh, for all the people that are quarantined to help your show go live. Uh, Oriol is going to give you a really quick one minute reminder on the producer interface and then we will present you new features uh, that are audio mixing and social presentation and play and stop. Okay. Oriol, go for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the, the main screen for producer. Here you could have up to four live inputs. It could be these inputs can be an external video source like um, a YouTube source that I have from, for example, for, Fra for uh, France Info. Another one could be TV Anywhere. TV Anywhere is our t uh, app to install in the phone. It's free to download. You just need to scan and make it live. It could be one of the packs, like the packs that I show it in the demo, or it could be TV Grid. TV Grid is our worldwide uh, distribution system. On top of that, you can mix all of that signals. Uh, you can overlay graphics. You can, you have intercoms to have a video feedback, uh, sorry, here, to all the, our equipment. You can do uh, a, a video mixing. That is one of the new things that we'll show. And also you could have videos on the play out. This one thing that I want to show you, that is the only thing, that is the play and stop uh, feature that we have implemented. Also other things that we have implemented, it's the automatic cut preview to program and make it play, the loop playback and the playlist. Other things that we are implementing and, and it will come very soon is the possibility to, to create a, a playlist to order to, to sort in the way that you want and to save this playlist for uh, later usage. On the output, as you remember, you can send that to grid. This is one of our receivers that could be could get the SDI output and it and also to uh, online platforms like YouTube, yeah, like Facebook, like uh, Twitch, or an RTNP feed to your web page. Thank you, Oriol. So that was a very, very quick reminder. Now we're going to show you the new audio mixing uh, solution. So it's a quick video, okay, 40, 40 second video. Uh, now we are going to present you another solution. I will let um, Oriol say a few words about it, which we call social production. Um, okay, social production is our, our approach to do uh, the same that you are doing with your meetings, with Zoom or other tools like that, but in a professional way. Uh, Johnny will show you the video and after that I will explain a little bit more. Okay. Just, just to explain a little bit more in a, in a few words, the idea is that you would have a tool like similar to Zoom or to all of these tools that you use for inter, uh, to do your meetings and you as a user you would see this interface that it will be very easy you will listen the rest in almost real time in the same delay that you have with zoom or with hangouts and you would have a talk on the other side all of the video outputs of the phones of the cameras will come to producer so one producer you will have this as a sources and you would mix that in a professional way so for the users, it will be simple as a video conferencing and for professionals, it would be interesting as a video mixer. Thank you, Oriol. <clears throat> so again, for these two features, audio mixing and the social production that we just presented, uh, they will be made available for people that want to use it as a beta uh, by the end of May and the official release 
will be in the first week of June. Okay, so if anyone is interested in using these features, just get in touch with us and we can make it available uh, by the end of May for you to test. Okay, uh, that was all about the webinar. So I see that a lot of people have been asking questions. First of all, I remind you that the video will be on our YouTube channel. Uh, the recorded webinar will be on our YouTube channel. And at the same time, we will be uh, sharing all the material by email. If you have any question, like feel free to use the Q&A now. As a reminder, we just presented you today our remote production solution. Uh, we will continue to do a series of other webinars on our distribution solution. And if you ever need anything, just contact us and we can do a one-on-one -on -one live demo. Okay, so we're going to go through the Q&A session now, uh, taking the question as they came in. The first question is uh, from Alessandro. Is it possible to choose which channel has best priority and less priority, or is it fixed uh, from a channel one, best priority, and channel six, less priority? Uh, the priority is fixed. One best priority is six less. You cannot change it. Perfect. Thank you, Oriol. Uh, Andrew, uh, please, what is the name of this technology and what's the cost implication? So, well, your question came uh, maybe around like uh, time lock. Uh, so the name of the free technology we presented are TVU RPS, which I will answer TVU RPS, TVU time lock, and TVU producer. As for pricing, it will really depend on your project, uh, how many camera, I mean, and exactly like which technology fits the best your project. If you need pricing detail, Alessandro, and you have a project in mind, just get in touch and one-on-one -on -one we will provide you the quote. Uh, what is the recommended bedwind needed for optimal performance of the RPS, Oriol? Um, the maximum bandwidth that you would use, that it, it will be for six channels at 15 megabits per second and 16 audio channels per video channel is around 100 megabits per second. That is the maximum. You can reduce that, uh, reducing quality, reducing video channels or reducing audio channels. Okay, thank you. What is the IP channel on the, on the RPS? The IP channel is uh, an IP connection between encoder and decoder. It's like a VPN that we implement and it permits you to have the, the equipment that have a network interface on the field like it, it was on your home. That is a play, a playable as remote camera control, PTZ cameras, uh, commentary positions, uh, IP intercoms, IP prompters or almost anything or just a, a laptop connected to your network from the field. Thank you, Oriol. In the case of daisy chain, how will the camera feeds on the first RPS appear on the second RPS encoder? Can you please explain further, Oriol? Uh, if you want to share your screen to explain, you can also. Could, could you repeat? I, I've lost this question. In, in, the, in the case of daisy chain, how will the camera feeds on the first RPS appear on the second RPS encoder? On the, in the case of, the, of, uh, of daisy chain, you would have two encoders and two decoders. So encoder one will transmit to decoder one and encoder two will transmit to decoder two. The, the key point here is that we synchronize encoder one and encoder two and decoder one and decoder two. That permits here in the, uh, on Yoni, on the, uh, on the scheme of Yoni, you can see that all the outputs on the decoder are synchronized in the same way that we do in time lock. So the six output of the coder one and the six outputs of the coder two are synchronized between them. There is no time delay between them. Thank you, Oriol. Again, we will also insert all the question in detail and send you the answer separately at the end of the webinar. Uh, who is our distributor in Italy? Uh, in Italy, if you want to reach out our distributor, it's a professional show. Okay, we will uh, send you the contact. Okay. Uh, next question. Could you confirm again the time delay between intercom and video delay, please? 
Um, intercom is almost zero. Is a the the intercom it, it uses a, a, a voice over IP connection, so it goes to zero. It's the same delay that you would have with a digital phone. And on the video side, the delay from the transmitter to the receiver on the high quality transmission, it could go down to half a second, 500 milliseconds. And the video return from the, from the studio to the camera is even lower, is less than 200 milliseconds. Thank you. I have also insert the question. Um, is it only with 5G you do TVU? Uh, so I'm not sure, Ibrahim, to understand that question, but uh, we do offer 5G with our TVU1 transmitter. Uh, then, so that's like we, because we are using cellular bonding over that solution. So that would be, I would say, the only solution that work with 5G. Oriol, if you want to uh, add something to this. Yeah, well, you can use almost any internet connection that, that you have for our equipment. You can use 5G, 4G, 3G, uh, satellite internet, uh, wired internet, uh, vegan, anything. And we can, in the, in the case of the TV one on the bonding systems, you can add all of these connections to do the video transmission. Okay, another question from Jaime. You've mentioned Panasonic and Sony. Have you tested with Grass Valley camera? Well, we have tested with Grass Valley camera, but the connection is not pure because Grass Valley doesn't have a pure IP uh, connection between the, the camera and the OCP. In that case, they use the IC2 IP protocol that is not a pure IP. For Grass Valley, you have to put in the middle one MCP, the master station, so the connection is from the master station to the cameras and from the OCPs to the master station. It works, but the, the, but the setup on your site is more complex. Thank you, Oriol. Okay, next question. Um, so here, like, uh, is it like 20 for the producer? Do we offer 20 hours for free or can we recharge for free until the next 20 hours? Uh, right now, I mean, you are mid-May. So the, the offer for the free producer is until end of May. Uh, it goes by batch of 20 hours. If you have a request for additional hours, you need to contact us and it will be one-on-one -on -one per case. If you need more hours, we can charge more hours, okay? Um, maximum, uh, what, uh, which is the best connection we can use for TV time lock field production? Uh, the best connections are all the connections that you can have it. Uh, nowadays with the empty stadiums without public, uh, the 4G connection would be enough for, to do that connection. In the time that the stadiums were full of people, we recommended to have extra bandwidth with Wi-Fi or Ethernet cables. Thank you. Have we integrated 5G modem into TVU1 or is there any roadmap? No, yes, we presented this week our new uh, TVU1 with 5G modems and 4K. So you can transmit 4K over uh, TV1 with 5G and 4G modems. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, what's the total of signal available in social production? In social production, you could have up to four live signals plus one video on play or the playlist on play an extra IP connection without control and an, uh, uh, an effect site. So in total, seven. Okay. Four live feeds plus three, three others. Thank you. Uh, does TVRPS supports HD and 4K? No. Uh, TVRPS supports 10, up to 1080p uh, with a reduction of channels and 1080i up to six channels plus two returns, eight channels in total. Also, it, it can be used in SD, in okay. 720p. Okay, thank you. Uh, to transmit six AG channel, how many megabits we will need? So I think you've answered already, it was 100 megabits, correct? 
with the maximum quality that we can offer on RPS, yes. We can, we say normally that uh, in H.264, we can send a very good quality video at eight megabits per second per video channel. So in total, it would be 50 megabits, so the less. From 50 to 100, you choose the quality that you want to, to transmit. Thank you. Can I reduce RPS bandwidth utilization by using H.265 encoding on all channels? Mm, can you repeat, Johnny? I didn't can, can I reduce RPS bandwidth utilization by using H.265 encoding on all channels? Yeah, you can use uh, H.264 or H.265 for RPS. You choose the, the quality that, that you want. Okay. Uh, is party line a feature within producer or is it a separate, uh, separate piece of software? No, it's inside, it's inside producer and it will be inside producer. And, and the, the app on the, on the user's field will be inside TV Anywhere, that this is our app. Okay. A uh, question from David Lodun. With the audio functionality, will you be adding the option for plugins? Also an option to add an audio input from the local computer. Uh, Plugins is not uh, developed now and it will not be. The option for an audio input is in the roadmap and we'll, we'll, that's a thing that we'll, that we'll show you very soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, one last question from Pedro. The CCU control is remote also or the camera operator will have to do it? No, 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 the, the camera control could be remote using the IP tunnel as we show it in the video. So you could have the CCU operator uh, at home and, and doing the color correction of the camera in the field using internet. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, I believe I've answered, uh, no, I just have a new question that came in. If I need to transmit a channel with two equipment, we can use the same receiver to have the A channel or we need two receiver? You will need two receivers. Okay. So, okay, cool. We need two receivers. Okay, so we've answered all the questions that was there. I mean, it's not over. I mean, if you have any other question, you can, of course, send it to us uh, via the contact information that I've put at the end of the presentation here, okay? Or you can just contact uh, your local TV representative and he will be able to help. Again, we will be recording everything and we will be sending all this information for email as well. So thank you very much for joining today's webinar. And... Uh, hope you have a good day and good luck with the situation uh, so far around the world. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody.